right, friends, today I am playing with, uh, I love creating wreaths for the season. And today I just wanted to play with a little wreath that would be kind of like a springtime wreath. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I wanna add a lot of greenery cause that's just kind of my thing. I love greenery. So I'm gonna do that. And there's two ways, I do this both ways. Sometimes I draw, I just take a bowl and I draw a circle around. But today I'm wanting a little bit more organic feel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint along the rim. You've seen this done. And uh, go ahead and kind of stamp that on my paper so it has this organic um, kind of like twigs type of feel. Let me just go through some of my supplies. If you're not interested in that, you can just go forward. Don't hurt my feelings at all. Uh, I'm going to use my 8 Velvet Touch Princeton brush. That's kind of my go-to. I love the, the feeling of it, and I love um, how short the handle is, and they're just, they're kind of snappy and just perfectly stiff for me. I'm going to keep out my little uh, number four round from Zen Art because I like how the point is pretty small and I can get some small areas in there. And then um, I think that's it actually. So I'm gonna use those two. I will be using, as always, I you know can't afford to paint with Winsor Newton every day. So I use these My Langs, which I love, can't recommend enough for you beginners um, as well. I don't like to take time to mix my colors when I'm painting so much every day. So this has every color I can imagine. Look at all these rich browns, blues, greens. They have a I love my Lang's purples and pinks. They're gorgeous. And then all the whole range of oranges, reds, yellows. Love the color palette that they have. This is their smaller one and it's quite reasonable. They're really vibrant. They're um, also transparent. And then make sure you have your wash and your rinse water, very important. And I love my little ceramic dish by Meaden. It's handy and um, I've dumped way too many plastic cups. Oh, and then my Artisto paper, which it seems like you guys are loving. I'm so glad. So this is the little pads that I always recommend. I buy these in three packs, of course, because I'm painting so much, I go through tons of them. But I catalog them with whatever the season, or maybe these are all birds, and I refer back to these all the time. So those are just fabulous. They've got great texture, but what I'm using today is their bigger sheets. Um, because I was having a hard time fitting my wreath on the smaller pad. So this is their 9x12, 140 pound cold press. Again, just a wonderful, wonderful texture. I just can't say enough about these. Even their aesthetics I love. All right, let's get started. I'm going to play with some pink pigments. So what I will use is, I'm gonna start with just kind of as the base and I'm going into my paint with the side of my brush. It may look like I'm using the point because I don't have that much pigment in there. I need to refill it, but it's actually, look at that beautiful pink rose red. And um, you want to protect your points. So you don't want to go in there with that. Let's see what this red is. I really want to stay kind of lighter. So that's a little bit darker, which is fine. Rinse my brush before I go into my green. I love this yellow green. It's one of my favorites in their palette. So let me just do, this is about 50% water, 50 pigment. But still, when I go to use it, take it from my palette to my paper, I'm going to tap off. But when I'm mixing it to get the right value, I'm just going for kind of a mid-value range of 50-50. I'm gonna rinse my brush and just stir that up a little bit in case I want that deeper pink. 
And then this is the rose red, which is a little brighter, kind of reminds me of like upper rose, maybe, which I love. And there we go. Okay, so I've got my paints ready. Um, let's get some sap green on there. And you know, I really use a mixture of sap green and olive green. And find the green that you kind of gravitate towards and go with that. Okay. Um, oops, hold on here. I have a photo, just a little bit of a reference here. Okay, and now I lost it, so hold on one second. There we go, okay. Oops, I think I got some paint on there. And the other thing I've got really handy is, of course, my paper towel. I just got a little dot on there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start off, oh, you know, I didn't get my brown. So let's get that. Just loading the side of my brush with that brown. And I'm going to paint the rim of my bowl here. And I'm going to kind of mix up the colors. So I'm gonna have some darker browns in there. You could even put some really pretty greens, but just painting that rim. And this bowl, I just noticed, it has kind of a thicker rim, probably a little thicker than I really want, but that's okay, we're gonna make it work. So I'm not adding any of the green in, but you could. Okay, so let's lay it down. Yeah, I like that, it's a little organic. I'm gonna do one more, probably have enough on there, but just in case, I just wanna add some different colors. And actually, let's add a little bit of that green, you can see Just give it some interest there. Okay, and I'm gonna do it just a little bit off of the first one. There we go. Go a little bit this way. Okay, so it kind of looks like some twigs. Now I got some splatters in there. I'm not gonna worry about that. It's fine, it doesn't bother me. All right. I want to do as much as I can here before it gets too dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and start going in and laying down some value because I wanna use some of the wetness of that brown to blend into my brush. Using the point of my brush, and I picked up paint, but I've tapped it off so my brush isn't fully loaded. And then point, press, Let's do some more. Point press, point press. And I wanna get that blend. Point press. Point press, using the side of my brush as well because that can make some really interesting, fun colors, mixes. Point press, point press. Ooh, and I love how it got that brown in there. That's what I was wanting. Some little dabs. By the way, if you ever want to take a class with me, I have these fun Zoom classes. It just reminded me because we're doing a dab stroke in there. So that kind of reminded me. Point press. You want to try and vary the, the size and the length of your leaves. Point, press. So it's interesting. Some are thin, some are thick. Point, press. Point, press. Point, press. And maybe point, press, you know, kind of leading your eye around. Point, press. Point, press. Point, press. So some longer ones, some thinner ones. Point, press, point, press. Just adding those in. I'm working a little bit fast because I want there to be some spreading. So I'm using the tip of my brush here. And we'll just create some little 
branches coming out like that, just for interest. Just very light pressure with the end of my brush like that. So it's kind of leading our eye around in these wonderful circles. There we go. And I'm dipping into all of my green colors. Just using a very light touch with the tip of my brush, leading my eye around. I'm gonna pick up just a little bit more of that green paint, a little bit more water in there, and some of our sap green and olive green, a little bit more water. You want the paint 50-50. It moves around quite easily. I can move that around. It's like drink, it's like water, okay? So let's see, let's put one right here. There we go. So I'm trying to just move our eye around here. So we have some fun interest going on. There we go, I kind of like that. I think what I'll do is add some yellow to that green and maybe create some lighter ones, point press, and tuck those in. And then we'll do some darker ones too. There we go. Just giving a little bit of interest there. Yeah. I like that. So that some different things kind of catch my eye. Got some dark ones in there. Maybe a real pale green, so more water. In there. And I'm still able to use a little bit of that brown paint in there. There we go. Okay, I like that. I'm going to use my teeny tiny brush and I'm just gonna create some little like buds. So I'll go into that pink and let's just add some tiny buds coming out here. Just here and there. I kind of tend to work in this zigzaggy motion that I really like. So kind of threes, rule of threes, which I love. And while that's wet, I'm going to go into it with some green. So we get a little bit of that mix there. And then let's see, how about if we add a little butterfly here? So I'm kind of drawing this. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if I can maybe do it in ink. Oopsie, I touched something. There we go, there's a little butterfly. And let's add some orange in there. I'm also going to use just a damp brush and going to expand on these little flowers a little bit. Just add in some more. 
for some interest here. I really, when I look at all these things, I kind of look at things in shapes more than the actual what I'm painting and kind of see where I might want to add color. Like that. And then let's paint this little butterfly. So let me get my orange, which is in my palette below here. And I'm going to just kind of lay down a wash here. There we go. Maybe some of this darker orange for this back pedal, back pedal, back wing. And I will tap in just to get a nice little blend here. There we go. Let's pick up some of that red. And then some of the orange, just tapping in. This is where, you know, really take advantage of what this medium can do. I want a deeper red here. There we go. Yeah, that's nice. And then I'll do his little body. But I wanna be kind of careful here so it doesn't flow into the orange. And then how about if we do a little bee? We've been enjoying those bees, I think, and they're always fun to kind of throw into a painting. So I'll do a little B right here. Just do his, let me see if I can, there we go. Get in here. And let's see, some pink, I mean black. There we go. Now he's quite small, but I like that. I'm gonna do his wings because it is a little bit of one of those things where somebody looks at your painting and then all of a sudden says, oh my gosh, I see a little bee there. And I really enjoy that. I'm just gonna add some yellow. I really enjoy that in my paintings where somebody sees something after the fact and it's like, oh, is that a little bee? So that's just kind of fun for me. And there we go. I've got some splatters in here. Those were intentional. I um, think they came off of my jar, but look how pretty that is. Now I can go in and let's see, where'd my green go? Here's my green. And oops, let me get this up so you can see. And we can add in some light values in the background here. So it looks like these leaves are more in the back. And there you go. And I think I'm about done. We could do some fun little splatters. Um, let's see, how about if we introduce like a blue color? Not that blue though. Let's see, let's see what blue color we can get. Mm, let's try this one. Maybe, that might be pretty. I could have painted these in too. Like little berries, which you definitely could do. But I think that's fun. I'm not sure if you can see those in there. Let me grab some of that. Oops, wrong one. There we go. Add some water, so I got that 50-50. And let's see, where could we add some little berries? So I've got my elements here. Maybe some little berries right there. 
little berries here. I could even just use water and expand on the fact that I've got those splatters. There we go. So I'm just kind of using where my splatters already were. We need a little bit down here. And it's always good to, I'm gonna go up just a little bit because I think this is another important thing. Now this is just a round wreath, but always be aware, look at this space around your wreath that you're not using because that's part of the elements too. So sometimes we get caught up in just what we're painting, but keep in mind this negative blank space too. And what are the shapes and sizes and are they equal? Is the top, there's too much room or, you know, how do they play into the whole image that you're creating here? I'm gonna go in and just kind of darken up some of these a tiny bit. And I think I'm gonna stop right there. I could really kind of go in here and create some more, but this is very washy and I'm kind of liking just how it is. Now I lost my beat a little bit there because it got some of that splatter. So feel free to make, you know, more on yours. But I think this, I rather like this. It's very loose, very um, organic, and I hope you give it a try. I really like this style. The last thing you actually could add is if we went into our brown, and you could add in a few more little twigs, like maybe you've got some of that. just to look like these are little branches. So that's kind of pretty too. These are all just ideas. You put in and you stop where you see it best suits you. All right, there you go. Have fun, happy spring. Um, I hope you give this a try. It's an awfully fun little um, seasonal type thing. I always like doing the seasonal paintings, especially with wreaths. They're just so easy to play with. I felt like I needed to kind of even out this side felt heavier. All right, there you go, guys. Have fun, happy painting, and thank you so much for being here. Okay, bye-bye.